All of Albion's operational data for the entire city. Convoy routes, surveillance targets, assets, it's all there. Think you can make good use of that. You bet your ass. Could you not hack the system for me and see just what the hell is going on? So I'm... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, let's talk about Watch Dogs Legion. I've been playing this game quite a bit over the last week. Ubisoft shot me out a code to review it. I've been playing it on the Xbox One X, not yet on the Xbox Series X. And I'm going to preface this review. It's not a review of the complete total experience for two reasons. One of them is that I would definitely want to take a look at this on the Xbox Series X. So I'll have some further thoughts on the game. But also there have been some known crash bugs that have applied directly to the Xbox One X version of the game. I've had one big crash bug that uh, shut down my whole system basically by moving into the shop menu too quickly and it shut everything down. But there is crash bugs which I've sort of danced around and I didn't want the thing to crash on me again. I know that there's a hot fix. Probably will be out tomorrow or already by the time you have watched this video. That's not to say I haven't played enough of this game to tell you that I've really enjoyed my experience with Watch Dogs Legion. I gotta say it is kind of like the third season of the Watch Dogs TV show. And it's a very different season than the previous two entries have been. The first one, I, I think, uh, did a pretty good job at painting this dystopian future where we were all connected by technology and there was so much surveillance on all of us and hacking just became a huge part of our lives, set in Chicago, and it was pretty cool. But it was maybe not the total vision that was presented to us when Ubisoft first pitched us the idea of Watch Dogs. The second game, I think, lifting off on a lot of the, you know, kind of more silly themes and ideas that a show like Mr. Robot presented gave us characters that were larger than life, quite eccentric, and there was almost like this comedic streak in the second game, and it felt a little at odds with some of the danger and the violence that was in Watch Dogs 2, although the mechanics and the systems of the game were actually quite enjoyable. I did enjoy Watch Dogs 2 playing Watch Dogs 2 more than Watch Dogs 1. I think they've hit the perfect stride here with Watch Dogs Legion. And it's not a perfect game, but in terms of gameplay, it's really ridiculously enjoyable to play because obviously the developers have had time to tune the systems and tune the mechanics, use what's been working with Watch Dogs, the ability to hack into camera systems and security systems and drones and robots and employ all of these gadgets and all of this know-how to essentially deal with missions. And it's usually about infiltrating trading some kind of base or some kind of guarded establishment defeating the guards somehow up to and including shooting them in the head uh, but trying to figure out how to basically solve the puzzles that the game keeps serving up to you and it's tuned and it's polished and it's fun it's a great stealth experience but of course what's been employed with this game is the idea of recruitment and you've always been able to kind of look into the lives of the people the NPCs in the watchdogs universe from the get-go and kind of deal with narrative that was crafted kind of behind the scenes. But in this game, all of that is presented front and center. You're able to go and cruise through the streets of this futuristic London and start recruiting all kinds of people to join your team, which is really trying to take down this oppressive police presence in Albion, this security force that uh, has taken over the city, even put up signage on Buckingham Palace and Big Ben and stuff. They're just so egregious and gross. And they're tied to all of these uh, different gangs and, and uh, heinous criminals that are scattered all across the London boroughs. What you're trying to do is re-engineer and re-engage a brand new dead sec to challenge all of these oppressors and fight for the freedoms of the city because nobody is free in the city. You'll walk down the streets and you'll see guards holding people at gunpoint or have the, they've got them all chained up and they're screaming for their lives. There's a lot of violence and darkness at every corner of the game. And the game does feel heavier than previous Watch Dogs games which I think is more akin to the fiction of the world that has been crafted in this universe. It made a little more sense than Watch Dogs 2 for me, but also what happens when you recruit all of these different team members is there is a sense of silliness with the vast array of personalities that you might be able to employ for your cause. And what we've seen is that, of course, you can bring in little old ladies, and there actually is this little old lady voice 
that is used on a bunch of different characters because obviously they didn't get a million different actors to voice every single independent different character. So you're going to hear a lot of the same kinds of voice performances and some repeated sequences and phrases, but it's all handled ambitiously and it's fun. But what it does do is it takes the sandbox elements of Watch Dogs and just amps it up to 11. You can approach every scenario, every puzzle of a sequence of a base that you have to get into or sneak into or send a drone into all the loot that you have to collect that's hidden at the top of a building or deep underground. All of these different ways that you can approach them, but then you also add in, you sprinkle in the idea that there's a totally different personality in there with different attributes. Each of these different people might have different skill sets. They, they might have a cool fast car or a different weaponry or a different set of drones that they might bring to the table. So it's a constant game of testing different scenarios and different ways to play. There's a lot of emergent gameplay that comes out of the fact that yes, you do a lot of the same things over and over again, but you can do them differently because of the character that you play and the tools and skills that they bring to the table. And also you can engage in every sequence in a different way as well. Sometimes you can go in guns blazing if you want to, or you can activate a car to blast through a gate or something like that if you wanted to do that. Or if you pick up a, a, one of the cargo drones to grab a fuel canister and drop it on everybody and create some huge chaos and explosions. And then there are mini games like being able to uh, play some kickball, some soccer, trying to keep the ball up in the air for as long as possible. You've got darts, you've got drone races and car chases. And driving through London, as I exemplified in my Let's Play of Watch Dogs, I didn't want to spoil any of the story stuff. So everybody got to see my terrible driving in London. And that exists and persists to this day as I'm still playing Watch Dogs Legion. I'm finding it very difficult to acclimate to driving on the wrong side of the road. Wrong side of the road for me, okay? All of you folks in the UK. So I crashed through everything. I'm sorry to all the hapless NPCs that get in the way. People that I could be recruiting, but instead I'm running them over. I apologize to those folks. But it's still fun, although a little bit silly and unrealistic because the cops sort of leave you alone. Even if they've been compromised cops, even if they're owned by Albion, they don't really chase you at a moment's notice. Now you can escalate the police presence and of course you can crank the difficulty if you want to, but I've found it fairly easy to get from location A to location B with as much carnage and devastation in my wake as I can possibly manage and nobody really says anything, which is a little unrealistic, but it doesn't impact the fun. And honestly, that's my takeaway from this game is that it's all a little overtly silly. It's all a little bit crazy. The fact that every person is a full-on high-powered hacker, everybody's got this amazing technology, but you're going up against a security force that is always fooled by the fact that you've activated their phone and they go, huh? huh? And they look at their phone like they've got this weird phone call and, and that allows you to sneak past them. You know, every single time and every different base, they never outwit you. And yet they're supposed to be the elite in security forces. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of silly stuff that you kind of have to forgive because this is a game. It's a game. And when I, I shelved all of my narrative expectations and all of the kind of hopes that I would like to see a game like this reach the heights of, like it's still not Grand Theft Auto. It's still not even Assassin's Creed or the, the Far Cry franchise in terms of giving you characters that you really can't forget and really like get into the hearts and minds of and they stay with you. I think there's lots of other open world games and UB makes a bunch of them that have done a better job with that. They've made interesting characters and I think part of the challenge with this game is that there's so many characters it's hard to really get invested in any of them and they're all a little bit disposable like when you lose a mission it's not necessarily that your character dies it's they end up in prison or they end up in a hospital and eventually they're back on the team and you can send them back out on the jobs but that buffet of different personality types also gives you a sense of remove from everything. There are just basically like pawns in your chess game to kind of overtake the city. But saying all that, I love the city of London. The city of London is an excellent place to set watchdogs. And when I thought about it, I, I feel like this, it's almost too bad that this isn't starting point for watchdogs. It's a great ground base. London is such a surveilled city. It's a city where the potential oppression of a police force is, is right there. It's evident, right? Because there's a camera on every corner, on every street sign. It feels Orwellian in real life, but it's also such a crazy city to visit in reality and also in this game, which does a very good job at kind of scale modeling the experience of traveling through London and, and the disparity
similarity that you'll see, the differences that you'll see from the architecture in one zone to another. The boroughs are all different. The graffiti that's employed and placed all over and the signage and the branding and the leaves and the details, it's incredible. And it pushed my Xbox One X to the limit, which is why I'm very excited to see how this game runs on the Xbox Series X. And the city is such a living, breathing thing, not just because you can recruit everybody, but the amount of attention to detail that it's just a perfect foil. It's a perfect challenge for you to drive in my case, but as a player, it's just fun to experiment and engage with this virtual world that the, the developers have crafted for us. So I was very happy to play this video game. I kind of shelved my criticisms around the storytelling, and it's unfortunate because the beginning of the game is actually quite compelling. You, It's very spy-like, it's very James Bond-like, and the mind boggles thinking about what Ubisoft could do, uh, you know, making a, a, a legit license James Bond game, an open world James Bond game where he travels from location to location, that would be incredible. And and they tease a sense of that at the in the opening sequence, but then it kind of drops away as we reset everything in the game. Because it's like a toy box. It's like somebody had your kid's toy box and overturned it and said, play, make something, which is fun in and of itself, but there is this looseness and this lack of tangibility without this sort of real guidance that you would get. That being said, I did love the mini missions that you go on to basically rally each borough to join the cause. And that might be defacing some signage or freeing a, a very important person or taking a photograph of some evidence. Or something. I loved all of that. I love seeing the fireworks that would happen when you see a part of the city has rallied to the cause. I thought all that was great. And honestly, it's just so fun to play. It's really fun to play. The driving works, the drone hacking is fun, cruising around as a spider bot is cool, stealthing into different installations is always a blast, outwitting the security guards is fun, getting into gunfights is fun, the physical hand-to-hand -hand combat is okay, and there actually are some bare-knuckle brawls that you can get into. It's okay, but generally, all of the things that you get to do, the widgets that you get to play with, pretty damn cool. Visually, it's great. There's a great soundtrack in this. You're going to hear lots of fun accents and fun voices and lots of characters to meet, clearly. I am looking forward to playing it on the most advanced hardware that I have at my disposal. But what I've played so far, I've really enjoyed Watch Dogs Legion. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10.